High up in Australia's tree canopy lives the grumpiest, grouchiest, and surliest little assassin in the world. With giant exaggerated features, these cantankerous cranks can disappear into their surroundings, ready to strike when the moment suits them. That's my finger, yeah. <laughs> this is the grumpy cat of birds, the tawny frogmouth. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Frogmouths are a family of nocturnal predatory birds related to nightjars. There are 13 individual species, and they're found throughout the Indo Pacific region. And I got to meet one of the two Australian species, the tawny frogmouth. I think I'm getting some side eye from this tawny frogmouth. I'm definitely getting side eye. <laughs> You're right? Yeah, lake and So this friend here is a tawny frog mouse. And despite how much he might look like an owl, it's not even related. It's actually part of the nightjar family. You know, this is definitely a case of convergent evolution. So they end up looking similar, but stem from completely different lineages. Despite looking like an owl that's gone through Mario Party's facelift, they couldn't be more different. Unlike owls, which have powerful talons for grasping and tearing at prey, tawny frogmouths have gone another route. See, his head is about half the size of his body, and um, the reason for that is because they have gigantic mouths. His beak is actually fairly short, but it's really, really wide, so when he opens his beak, it's got a gigantic cavernous mouth in there. He uses that rather than using its claws. So the little claws on their feet are not meant for hunting. The way that they hunt is all with the face. This big wide beak with a hook on the end is what they use to scoop up and uh, hold tight. Ooh. And hold tight to their prey, using their large mouth rather than their talons. Unlike owls, which generally are smash-and-grab ambush predators, tawny frogmouths let their prey, primarily insects and small mammals, come to them. They prefer delivery over takeout. These birds are mimics. The inside of their mouths are bright yellow, but it's not just a sense of style, it's allure. See that bright yellow in the beak? Well, that combined with these whisker-like feathers all around its face, it's supposed to emulate what looks like a flower. Now, what likes flowers? Insects. But they're not simply aggressive mimics. They also use mimicry to blend in. They have a lot of great control over the feathers on their body and on their head. So if they want to try and blend in, they can flatten themselves out and become extremely sleek. You can see he almost looks like a branch that's extending off of this main branch. So they'll try and blend in with the trees that they're sitting on to become even more camouflaged while waiting for prey to come to them. Even their coloring you can see, it's called cryptic coloring or cryptic camouflage. And that's something that kind of mimics the environment that they live in. And it allows them to be even less perceptible to both predators and prey. One of their most striking features are their giant eyes. So another thing that does make them resemble owls is the fact that they're nocturnal. You can kind of see that by the morphology of their gigantic eyes. Uh, meant to let in as much light as possible in, in low light conditions. So they do see incredibly well and hunt very well at night. Ooh. <laughs> All of these features come together to give frogmouths incredibly expressive faces.
Bunny frogmouths are the most charming birds I think I've ever met. Just for how grumpy and excited and how, uh, <laughs> I don't know, how charismatic they are. <laughs> they look grumpy. They aren't actually grumpy. It's wonderful. If Grumpy Cat was a bird, it would be a tawny frogmouth. Trust me. Despite their apparent malcontent, tawny frogmouths have rather adorable relationships. First of all, they mate for life. Breeding season starts in the spring, and pairs will build their nests together. But tawny frogmouths aren't very good at building nests, and males in particular tend to just toss a bunch of sticks together and call it a day. If you listen closely in the spring, you might hear a male tawny frogmouth say, That's one fine-looking nest. Why doesn't mine look like that? Males and females share parental roles, and they take turns incubating the eggs. Food is also provided by both parents until the fledglings are ready to leave the nest at about five weeks of age. Tawny frogmouths have a vast range and thrive across mainland Australia and Tasmania. They prefer regions with lots of trees, but they have been seen in deserts as well. These birds are versatile. Because of their vast range and adaptability, tawny frogmouth populations are stable. While they do face threats from habitat destruction, bushfires, and insecticides, these grumpy little assassins are resilient. So, what animal should I talk about next? Hmm? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching!